In this video, I want to share why I use UIIDs as a primary case, especially with a Java project and also Postgres database. In terms of project, it actually doesn't matter if it's Java or any other language. It's just like example I will provide will be from Java. In terms of database, Postgres has a UIID type. That's why I'm using, I'm, I'm referring to Postgres, but actually you can use this approach also with different language and even with different database. Uh, I also listed advantages and disadvantages because I think whatever you choose, you always need to consider ups and downs because every approach has advantages or best sides or downsides. And as a reference, I will use my own project. I will put all links in description so you can take a look. So in terms of project, I am using this Nest service. And in this project, I have a type, which I call file entity. And this type has a primary key, ID field, ID column. And this column is a um, string in this case. I have another one, which is item entity. And in this case, it is UIID, and I have some annotations to automatically set this UIID and also do conversions, for example, when I send it to a controller or REST API. And in fact, we can take a look at this API. So when you save an item, it will automatically generate UIID for this item. And when we fetch this, it will automatically return this as a string. So I don't need to do anything. Whereas if I use file entity, in this case, I will do some basic conversion. It's still doable, uh, but you have some, addi <coughs> some additional steps. And, <coughs> and let me show the steps. So in this case, it will be file controller and yeah, not file controller, but file service. And what I do additionally here, I manually generate this ID. Before we go the deep dive into this project, let's take a look to advantages. Why would you consider using UAD? Uh, because most of us just stick with the integer as like incremental integer as a primary key. And actually this is not a bad, right? So in there is use cases where this is actually in probably it's most of the use cases, it's a good idea to use this, but sometimes Using UIID is also beneficial, especially if you want to have universally unique uh, all tables. Or, for example, you want to reference from one table another object and you don't want to, for example, let's say, do database linking or database relations. So you can use different approaches here. You can say, I am referring this type with this ID. And since ID is unique, you can easily get to this type. This is, this depends on use cases, obviously, but technically, let's say we are using integers, so integers has limits, whereas with UIID, you will probably not hit the uh, limit of duplicated UIIDs. And also it's very hard to get duplications with UIIDs. I provided this, this snippet from Stack Overflow discussions, you can take a look, but it's very hard to have duplicated UIIDs in terms of safety. UID doesn't reveal amount of data, amount of records in the database, or there are records. In terms of disadvantages, there's obviously also disadvantages. Uh, UIIDs usually take more space, which also has consequences, like it will take longer time to index. Since usually UIIDs are random, it will be also, there, will, there might be also some fragmentation consequences, which can also lead to some performance degradation. I provide those examples here. You can take a look to, you can read more about this. In terms of implementation, let me focus on this project. So what you will need. So first of all, probably it makes sense to start, start with a database. So in, in my case, I used Postgres, as I mentioned, and I can directly say type of this field is UIID and I can make it primary key and a database will take care of these values, let's say. And in terms of Application level, I can say type of this field is UIID. This will also take care of mapping and undoing, doing some conversions. 
because when you send it to, to UI, you will probably use it uh, as a string. Another thing that this will also take care is generation part. So whenever you save, by doing so, you can say generate UI ID using this style. I use random because using this will imply that this is a, a UI ID v4. You can also use UI ID based on time. In this case, you will set time here as a style. In this case, it will use UI ID v v1. And by doing so, when I use this in my service layer or in my application, I don't need to care about ID generation. So this is actually usually also the same in like incremental IDs. In this case, what I get as an additional item, as I said before, I can openly refer to this ID as a primary key or, or for example, if it's file and I want to show this file, I can use it, use ID for this. I'm not sure if it will work, but let's try. So let's say if I want to just see this one is another API call, let's say read one and we can put, so let me do this for now. I will just put it here. Yeah. In this case, I didn't change. That's why I get error. So let's actually fix this. See if I go to my controller, we will see that this request requires a an ID, so let's change this to a UI ID here, and we will need to change also service layers method and then say we will get UI ID. This will also have consequences on my repository layer. So let's go here and then say we will use UI ID here, import class, yes. And let's see if I restart the application, this will solve the issue. Yeah. And Let's fix here, UIG, one problem. This is update. Okay, we say we will need also the UIG here. And this is, I think, enough. No, it's not enough because we also have delete, which is also UIG. Basically, all references to primary key now are UIGs. So, also change this one. So once we check this, I also have example with string. We can also take a look to this one, but let's first check this. Okay. Let's go back to get this again. And here we have this ID. Let's take another one, item three. I want to just verify that we actually get the same another referenced item, not this here. Okay. It was item three, right? Yeah. And in terms of, in terms of reference, uh, in terms of another approach. So here I use string. One thing that I want to check, let's change here. This one, this is a file type. So I will, so I was using this varchar search fix because this is the size of UID. I will also set this just to UID without changing types. I want to see how this is working. And we will need database here. Let's drop all tables and okay. And restart application again. So this is file endpoint. And what we have here in database, we will have a UID, but in entity layer, we're going to keep string. And what I do here, this is a bit dumb thing to do actually, because you can get this automatically, but I want to just make sure that this is also working. So what we have here, we have generation of UID and we set it as a string. And let's try this out. So this is item API. We don't need this now. We need file API. And, and okay, I have some file here. Let's try to, okay. So this will not work because as much as given argument types. Okay, so this won't work. Actually, one thing, this is what I want to try because I will also need to refactor this one. Uh, one thing that I want to, what I want, but not what I want, but what one, I, one thing I see in terms of keeping this like this, like war chart, and I'm doing this explicitly sending this, regenerating this UI agent and sending it is, let's say in feature you changed ID generation logic. 
And in this case, you don't need to change your database because you don't, you are not buying it with actual like UI AG type. You can use any virtual server and this will work. So that's why this is what I, I also want to a bit play with. But as for topic of this video, I think let's just wrap it up. So we have this item entity, right? Here we have UI AG type and it's also binded to actual UI AG type field here, which is supported by Postgres. And then the rest is, is happening automatically. Thanks for checking this video. If you have any comments or any suggestions, like how we, what else we can do as a UIAZ, like primary key UIAZ or primary key with another type, other than integer, for example, let me know in comments and then see you in another video.